video is about matter, the stuff that makes up our world, and the properties of matter. So if you're looking at a forest, it's made of matter, it's made of stuff. If you're looking at stars, it's also made of stuff. If you're looking at something made by people, like for example, rods of steel, that's made of stuff. And so we're going to talk, or I'm going to talk, about what is this stuff? Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. If you look at the wave, the water, and zoom in with a microscope and then a super duper microscope, you would see that that water is made of molecules of H2O, water. And if you broke down the water itself into its particular atoms, you'd notice that here's a model of an atom. This atom is made of protons and neutrons and electrons, but there's smaller parts to that atom that are called protons. If you broke down the protons into even smaller pieces in the 1960s, it was verified that there are smaller pieces called quarks. And beyond quarks is still an unanswered question. We don't know what's even smaller than quarks. There are a lot of very interesting theories but we kind of run up against a barrier of physics which makes it extremely difficult to actually see what's there. Properties of matter are of two kinds. You can have physical properties, and these are properties that you can observe and measure without changing the identity of the substance. So you can look at them and you won't change the thing. But chemical properties describe a substance's ability to participate in chemical reactions, so you're only going to see them if the thing is having a chemical reaction. And there's only two chemical properties that, in my classes, that you need to learn. It's flammability and reactivity. Everything else is a physical property of matter. So here's physical properties, for example. We have state at room temperature. Um, room temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. Is the object in its form, is it a solid, liquid, or gas? That's the state that it is. Malleability refers to the ability of a substance to be rolled or pounded into various shapes without breaking. And ductility refers to the ability to be pulled into a wire. Metals are famous for being very malleable and ductile. The solubility refers to the ability of a substance to dissolve into another substance. So for example, here's table salt, which is made of ions, little charged particles, of sodium and chloride. And here I'm going to shake the salt shaker. And sodium chloride, table salt, goes into the water. And if you notice, really pretty quickly, the little green and red particles separate from each other. So this is dissolving, where the solute, which is the salt, dissolves completely into the solvent, which is water. Thermal conductivity is the ability to transfer heat easily. Electrical conductivity means electrons can flow through a substance and carry an electric current. Color is another physical property. These coins are different colors because they're different materials. Hardness means if you scratch something with a diamond, does it leave a mark? And density is another physical property of matter. Chemical properties describe matter based on its ability to change into new arrangements of particles. So for example, here's burning propane. Propane is three carbons and eight hydrogens. You combine it with oxygen gas, and everything remixes, recombines, and you end up with carbon dioxide, water, and heat and light. And so this is a rearrangement of particles. So this is a called a chemical reaction, an exothermic reaction, because it's giving off heat and light. So the two basic chemical properties that you need to know are flammability and reactivity. Flammability, obviously, I hope, is the ability of a substance to burn. Here's a forest fire burning. And reactivity is the tendency of a substance to change into new substances in the presence usually of oxygen. But it could also be water or acid or other substances that it's reacting with. 
Rust is basically a slow burn of metal. It's an oxidation process, just like the wood is being oxidized on the left as it burns, so also the metal on the right is being oxidized by rust, only much more slowly. And there's two kinds of changes in chemistry. We have physical changes and chemical changes. Here's an example on the left of a volcano undergoing a physical change of state where the molten lava is going from liquid to solid and cooling. Whereas on the right we see a magnesium ribbon that is on fire. It's actually metal burning. Burning metal is undergoing a chemical change here. And physical changes are easy to undo, at least theoretically. If you took a can of Coca-Cola and smashed it, in theory you could rebend it back again. But chemical changes cannot be undone except by another chemical change. So for example, if you were going to bake a muffin, here's all your ingredients. You put them together and bake them and they undergo a chemical reaction. Um, how could you get back the original egg, flour, and sugar? After the atoms rearrange, you, you can't do it really. So you form new substances when atoms rearrange and you get this muffin here. So that's a chemical change. Here's an interesting chemical reaction for you. This is sucrose, powdered sugar, and in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid, 18 molar, kids don't try this at home, sulfuric acid is a strong dehydrator and sugar gets dehydrated by sulfuric acid and it's a strongly exothermic reaction, meaning a lot of heat gets produced. If I were to touch that glass beaker, it would be very hot. And there you see, go. wow, quite something mm -hmm. happening here. Uh, we have signs of chemical reaction going on here. Clearly you can see a color change. There's some gas being produced and in the, you'll see it in bubbles and some vapor a lot of heat and it's moving even. This is the result of our chemical reaction. The hydrogen and oxygen in sucrose was blown off in the form of water vapor as little uh, pock marks you can see left on the remaining carbon show that there were bubbles forming. So we're just left with pure black carbon. So how you know you have a chemical change instead of a physical change is you can see if the color of the substance changed or if heat was given off or absorbed into the compound, if there's a smell given off, if there's light like with the magnesium ribbon burning, sound produced, or gas like just bubbles fizzing and foaming. So all of those are signs of chemical change and I hope you enjoyed learning about properties of matter. Hope that was helpful.